Relentless is probably the best book I've ever read on high performance, whether it's high performance in sport or high performance in business or whatever you're trying to do. And it categorizes good, great, and outstanding really well. So you can use it yourself to understand more about yourself, but understand about those around you and what makes them tick. And for me, a really fascinating part of sport, probably the most fascinating part of any domain, is what keeps the outstanding players performing at the top level for a long time. And the author, Tim Grover, worked closely with Michael Jordan and Kobe, uh, not to get them to the top, but to keep them at the top consistently. I think you have, whatever the domain is, whether it's football, you have a lot of players that are good for one or two years and they kind of drift off. Maybe they had some success and, and that was enough and, and, and then they, they sort of relaxed a little bit and didn't quite. Then you've got Premier League footballers or players around the world that have been great for 15, 20 years. What separates the two? You have it in music where you've got bands that make three to five great songs and then they disappear and that's enough and they've had success to a certain level. Then you've got bands that make 30 songs. What, what differentiate those and, and what makes them wanting to perform when they've already got the money, the fame, the fortune, everything behind them, but they keep moving forward, they keep pushing. And the book Relentless categorizes three types of people. And this is how I like to think about sport, specifically running, but almost anything in life. And if you can adapt you're thinking to think like this, I think it puts you in a really powerful situation in, in most domains. So you've got your coolers, your closers, and your cleaners. And in terms of performance, the coolers are good, the closers are great, but the cleaners are unstoppable. Those are your Michael Jordans or your Roger Federer's of the world. It's often the approach to pressure that is the differentiator. So coolers avoid pressure, closers manage pressure well most of the time, but cleaners thrive on pressure. When it comes to motivation, it's almost a different word for the three categories of people. So coolers are content with being competent, closers are driven by competition, but cleaners are driven by an internal need to be the absolute best they can be. When it comes to consistency, Coolers are consistent, but they stay within their comfort zone. Closers are great in specific moments, and cleaners are relentlessly consistent and dominate continuously. I would say 80% of people in the world at least are coolers. They just turn up, do the duty, do the job, and then at five o'clock they're done. And that's in every aspect of life, whether it's the delivery guy, whether it's the person working at the supermarket, even an accountant or lawyer, 80% of people are going through the motions. It is so easy to be in the top 10%. To be in the top 10% for me, you need to show up, and part of showing up is that you need to care. It's a big part of showing up. You need to deeply and genuinely care about what you're doing, which means you're gonna think about it and you're gonna analyze your performance so that you can continuously move forward. You're gonna be a cleaner. It's, if you think about it, it's a huge opportunity in anything you do. You can be the cleaner, the person who gets it done no matter what. And if that's in a business or a work situation, that's a safe pair of hands and you can easily apply this to running, so easily apply this to running. It's all about installing the habit. So you wake up and your kit is already laid out the night before. It's getting done no matter whether you feel terrible or whether you feel great. If you wait until you feel great, it's just not gonna happen frequently enough for you to get anywhere close to being close to your potential. And if that has to start as just you getting out the door in your kit and you're just walking until you start to feel some air in your lungs and you feel the wind on your face and then eventually it turns into a, a really slow jog and guess what, you feel better than you did. 
and then it's happening and then you start to run and then it's a recovery run and you got it done because that's who you are that's your identity you're the person who gets it done it's internally it's a non-negotiable and you are the only person that cares you're the only person that matters if you look at any domain there's outliers of course Malcolm Gladwell wrote a great book about it you're gonna get outliers but in most fields it's the person that doesn't give up the person who relentlessly shows up who is gonna win the game and is gonna get to the top and reach their potential it is exactly the same in running and yes you've got some genetic advantages of course there is but don't make excuses it's it's you versus you so you are the genetic gift that you've been given and so it's how far you get from where you started from that's what really counts and that's what it's so crazy at the weekend at UTMB 40% of those people 2,500 people started a thousand dropped out and some of those are legitimate cases but you see all over social media now the excuses I had this, I had this illness, I had this wrong with my leg I, nobody cares nobody wants to hear your excuses it makes you less of a champion you're all champions for starting why make excuses as to why you didn't reach what you thought you were going to or what you were aiming for it's too hot, it's too cold, I had this, I didn't have that, I couldn't get this. Nobody cares. Just shut up, go home, go back to the drawing board and start putting things together again, day after day after day. You probably already know what you've done wrong. So don't justify it, there's no need to justify it to the world. Just go home, get your head down, come back again, that is showing up and that is the cleaner mentality not making excuses that's nonsense we can all rattle off the quotes like you've got Michael Jordan's quotes all over the internet missed over 9,000 shots lost over 300 games trusted to take the winning shot and missed and failed and let all his teammates down but it's him getting back up and trying again that makes him the winner that he is it's exactly the same at the weekend with UTMB don't even know his second name but Vincent Katie Shire just working tirelessly in the background don't need to be out there on show don't even need social media it's just about them working over and over again day after day after day relentlessly just being the cleaner being the person who gets it done day after day don't need the recognition don't even look for the recognition if you've got medals just put them in the bin they don't mean anything you know you've shown up and you know if you've given your best performance or not, you've given absolutely everything on the day. That's the reward. The fact that you can go out there and kill yourself until you literally lay on a bed and sleep through exhaustion. There is no better feeling in the world than being able to do that and having the privilege to be able to do that. You don't need a medal or a trophy or anything like or a time even to tell you that you've done your best. You can feel it deep inside. If you get anything from this, stop caring what people think and just be confident and comfortable alone in your own thoughts for days, for weeks, for months, ideally. That's your superpower. If you can stop caring about what people think and focus on your own game and that it's happening on a daily basis, relentlessly, like a cleaner, then you'll realize very, very quickly that the closest thing to superpower that you have is your drive, your dedication, your discipline, and your mindset.